Hey guys, welcome to another episode on Calvary Conversations. Like always, my name is Mariah and I'm here with my dad, Pastor Craig Roders. What's up? Today is our part two conversation with Joshua Lewis from The Remnant Radio. And if you haven't already, please go back and watch our part one conversation that will be linked in the description below. And so now here is our part two conversation with Joshua Lewis. So it's, it's been a journey. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be 30 in July. Um, it's not been, it's not been easy in that. Um, it's it's left me homeless, you know. Have a lot I read of this, assembly God friends kind of been frustrated with you, or have they been pretty respectful? Well, I was never ordained in the assemblies okay. um, because uh, even in Bible school, I had a, I had a professor who um, a Bible school. I was in a non-accredited like internship program basically, and. Um, and while I was there, one of the teachers there, he'd been in the assemblies for a long time, really pushed back against initial physical evidence. Mm-hmm. He would say, hey, it can be an evidence, but it's not the evidence. And he still believed in like second blessing, um, but it wasn't like the, it's signed by tongues. Um, and he taught us that. That really probably was the, was that little, that little, uh, I don't know, that prick that, that just kind of like, it would, it would, it would, it would nag at me. I was like, wait, if we're wrong about this, are we wrong about other yeah. things? You know, um, it was actually really good for me to think critically about my movement and critically about the denomination as a whole. Um, frankly, the Assemblies of God is a phenomenal denomination as far as I'm concerned, like paper. Each church is run differently. So some churches are, are wackadoodles, yeah. you know, <laughs> but some churches are like super sound and orthodox, um, you know, but as like on paper, um, they're, they're an orthodox, they're not hyper charismatic, they're um, they're a phenomenal denomination. I disagree with um, initial physical evidence. I, I disagree probably with second blessing. I disagree with um, uh, pre-trip rapture. But in the grand scheme of things, like I, everything else of the 16 fundamentals, like that's three of their 16 that I, I can't get down with. But I, I think the rest of them are pretty solid. I mean, it's very orthodox stuff. So, um, you know, we had the, the church that I went to in Illinois wasn't assemblies. So when we moved down, my Christ, my, my wife attended Christ for the Nations Institute for one semester, and we decided it wasn't for us. But we were just exposed to like that hyper charismatic yeah. community there, um, and just it was just so so not interested. Yeah. <laughs> it's really I can't I don't know how else to say it. I was just like uh, this just isn't for me. Um, I, I had adopted a fourteen year old um, uh, around that time, and me and Rose were sitting in a service. Um, and this guy was, was preaching a sermon and I literally removed Rose from the service. Like I looked over at her and she looked at me like, is this right? And I was like, let's get out of here. Like she hadn't been like a couple of weeks and I was like, you're not listening to this garbage. Like let's leave. Um, and and it, which wasn't, I don't think I've ever done that before where I was in a service and I was just like, no, this is too far. We got to (laughs) go. And you have to be careful, Uh, especially with, if you're with like younger children or stuff, because they're, they can easily be deceived and like not understand i know my dad took my little brother and they went to bethel like 12 years ago and he was young and he saw this lady like just cackle and it freaked him out and they were trying to put this guy down like they were trying to baptize baptize him but he wouldn't Uh like three people they want they couldn't get him down like to go under the water and he and it freaked my little brother out like he was like i used him as the experiment you know how like the little children always came to jesus (laughs) so i figured if this is really god it wouldn't freak a 10 year old out my my kid loved the worship. He's a drummer. He loved the worship, yeah. but as soon as he saw the holy cackling, he didn't he didn't like that. And then what they did three guys to wrestle a guy because he's the only thing is shaking, and uh, had to wrestle him in the in the pool. And he's like, "What's wrong with him, Daddy?" You know. So I knew this is not right because I mean Jesus, if anything, fought to get away from crowds, right? He didn't like you know. It, yeah. Yet little children loved him, so it's like he wasn't doing crazy stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and there are like legit people who are demonized in those movements, oh, yeah. and and the Holy Spirit touches them, and they're getting demons out. Like, I, I knew I saw I was with Daniel, and we were in a service. Daniel's the guy who mentored me, um, and uh, there's this guy in the back row runs up to Daniel. He just runs up to him and like staring him, staring square in the face, and you could tell this guy was demonized, mm. and he just started like confessing sins. Oh. Right. Like he, he ran up and he's like, I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I'm a, like, he just started like, 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 like rattling off sin. Right. And as he was doing it, his body seized up. Right. 
and like his face got real red and like you see the veins in his in his throat like he was trying to confess sin and like whatever force had him did not want him confessing sin right so it's like he knew like i've got like three seconds to do this i, I better do fast. it he starts like you know confessing sin and uh this like this force starts seizing up on him and, and daniel just touches him on the forehead like doesn't doesn't slap him doesn't hit him just touches him and just a squeal comes out of this guy uh-huh. Right. And then he starts speaking in tongues on the way down. Oh. Like like he got delivered and started speaking in tongues before he hit the ground. Um, I don't know. Exactly. Like I, yeah. there's some stuff, but like you can see stuff in services and go, that's demonic. But then you have to ask yourself, is it is this person receiving a demonic force through laying on of hands or does this person have a demon inside of them? And when the Holy Spirit touches them, the demon is manifesting. And that's something I really have a concern with. Yeah. I think. That there's demonic stuff that's manifesting and we think it's God yeah. and we're not pastoring this person or casting a demon out of that person who's got, who's really afflicted. Yeah. And we're like, Oh, Lord's doing a new thing. And it's like, <laughs> I don't think that's God. So there, there could, it, could it be a couple things there? There was a guy, if I'm correct on this, there was an individual who has an unholy fascination with angel, angels and the supernatural and traveling to heaven. Um, this person's teaching is not in step with the gospel. Um, they have an imbalanced. <laughs> huh? Todd Bentley. Uh, no, uh, uh, but but someone kind of in that vein, though, uh, someone who has a very similar ministry and and speaks of the supernatural in a similar way, where you can go to their church for you know four months or listen to you know three months of sermons. I mean, just week after week of them traveling from place to place, listen to all their sermons and not hear the gospel. Mm-hmm. Not hear, um, not hear faith and repentance. Yeah. Not hear trust in Christ, but hear all of the supernatural access that you have to this mystical plane, um, and and that is a recipe for destruction. Um, the Apostle Paul tells us not to um, not to put up with people who want to go on about visions who are puffed up by about visions of uh, 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 visions and angels, and they want to go on and on and on about all of these these supernatural experiences that they've had. I've sat in services where someone will have a dream, they'll come into the service, they'll tell the dream, and they will spend the entire hour and a half service exegeting their dream um, and talking about like this is what this meant, and this is what that meant, and this is what this means for us today as a church, and da 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 da, and like never mention the cross and never mention um, the gospel, never mention um, uh, uh, the, the doctrines or scripture for that matter. I mean, if you've ever sat in a service where someone wants to talk about their spiritual experiences and never mention scripture, but only when it is to support um, uh, uh, their experience, um, it's, it's actually, it sucks the life out of a Christian. Yeah. You can sit in a service, like if you're sitting in a service like that, and you're super excited and you're like super alive, like you need to question mm-hmm. yeah. your walk with Jesus. Yeah. Because like there are people who sit, like I know people who sit through services like that. I sit through services like that and I just die on the inside. I'm like, when are you going to give me the life giving force that is in the scriptures? Like, when are you going to give me like, like this, the real bread that's from heaven? Like, this is not, this is garbage. Mm-hmm. Like let's get to the good mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and, uh, I, I think that we, we've got to be careful. Um, we got to be we got to be careful about all the nonsense. So um, and you can always test the spirits by what they say about Jesus. You can you test the spirits by their doctrine. If their doctrine's in error, you don't follow them. Um, just full stop. Um, yeah. And you would say kind of like for, uh, to give kind of someone who's maybe a younger Christian. So if you're just hearing about visions and dreams yep. and not hearing the gospel ever, that would be a good sign holiness. for you, like a simple template to sort of say where's Jesus right in the message. Yeah, so so here's here's your template. Um, if you're sitting in a service and they're trying to tell you all the things that you can do, all the great things you can be, all the great things that you have access to, all the superpowers that God wants to give you so that you can be amazing, um, run. Yeah. Right? So wait, wait. Um, so you're saying that God is not here to serve us completely, but we are here to serve God, like we're just right. supposed to do His will. Wow. <laughs> that's right. That's okay. right. So so. The way that the gifts of the Spirit work is the Spirit gives the gifts as He sees fit. Mm-hmm. God is sovereign. God is in control. God is um, uh, he, he is the giver of the gifts, right? Um, we are servants. We are in need of repentance continually. We are in need of dependence on Christ. We need to lean into Him and to wait on Him and to be uh, desperate for Him. Um, he uh, sustains us. 
Um, and, and, and that's that's the Christian message. That's that's the gospel. Um, you know, um, I say that's not the gospel, um, but that Christ has died for our sins. We are in need of a Savior, not just at the moment of our conversion, but continually. We are in need of a Savior. Um, and as we believe in him, these signs follow, yeah. right? Um, but, but we're not looking for the signs. Um, if you start looking for the signs without dependency on Christ, it's idolatry. Um, and I think we can and, invite, and we, right, with that sign it. chasing, w- unknowingly we can invite a demonic presence to manifest, right? Because the Antichrist, I don't know what your belief on that, but he'll do signs and wonders. I mean, they'll do, you know, call thunder from the sky. So just because there's a sign doesn't mean it's God, right? Just because no. there's a supernatural I'm, thing. So it's like we need, I like a verse that's really cool. I think that I said this Sunday, and I think you agree, it's kind of capsulize everything you just said jeremiah 23 28 says the prophet who has a dream let him tell the dream and he who has my word let him speak my word faithfully what is chaff to the wheat says the lord and i was love it chuck always said what is someone's dream or vision compared to the powerful wheat of the word Amen. it's chaff so we, we, you know not that there isn't yeah. ever a biblical vision or dream but it should definitely go along with the word of god and it shouldn't of course replace the word of God. Like you said, we should be preaching the well, word. I would, I am not convinced. Um, I'm not convinced that these, these sons of God, these Christian born again believers are um, praying to God in heaven for their Christian brothers. And when they ask God in heaven, who is a good God for a fish, mm-hmm. that God is giving them a scorpion or a serpent. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I have a hard time with, like the New Testament talks about asking God who's in heaven for something good and him giving you something demonic. Mm-hmm. Um, and but I, I can make perfect sense of a person who's preaching a false gospel, right? Who's preaching another Christ, who, who isn't concerned about faith and repentance, who, who, who's, pe- who's preaching something else, right? Mm-hmm. And them coming with false signs and them coming with a demonic spirit and them, that makes sense to me. Okay, what I have a hard time wrapping my head around theologically is an individual who is preaching faith and repentance, a person who is faithfully, as far as I can tell, though, though their doctrine might not be perfect, but they're, but they're trying to administer the gospel, um, that that person prays and you get a demonic spirit. I, I don't quite have an understanding of that yet. Mm-hmm. Um, is it possible? I think you need to be very careful. I mean, very, very careful about um, surrounding yourself with ministries um, where, where there's a premium on these experiences that are unbiblical, be careful. Um, but I'm not willing to say that all of those are going to be demonically led. Um, cause again, in my experience, it feels more psychosomatic than it does demonic. Um, I'm very, I'm very careful to call things demonic and probably has a lot to do with the movement I was raised in. Um, cause you, you, you'd have to prove to me through scripture that, um, that, that, a, that a Christian who really loves the Lord can operate in the Holy Spirit and a demonic spirit um, and impart demonic powers to people when praying to God in heaven. I, I think you'd have a hard time, a hard time proving that. So what you're saying to get it, what I'm hearing you, then would be like, what is it? First Corinthians, is it 14? What is it where it says, is it second Corinthians? I'm sorry, where it says that Satan was disguised himself as an angel of light and his followers would disguise himself as angel of a, as righteous men. So you're saying it would be more of somebody who's maybe appearing to be a Christian who's not. So he'd yeah. be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Or yeah. So clothing. so like you think about think about Mormons, they appear yeah. right. Like they've got an appearance of light, right? Yeah. Like they're they're doing all kinds of hmm. good things, yeah. right? So but they're not preaching the gospel. And you see right? demonic so because if you right. know their baptism where they do the proxy, you know the big tank like in the Old Testament with the ox around it and the big lever. And then they walk through and they'll say this, see, this person is pretending to be this person or saying their name. And they'll walk through and they'll see a spirit. This is from their Mormon book or their magazine yeah. saying they'll see a spirit behind that person that's sad they're praying for. And then as soon as they go through the water and baptism, then they come out. And th- this is from their literature, smiling. And they see that person then ascend to heaven. So, I mean, we know that's demonic spirits. That's not right. It's once for a man to die and then the, the judgment. Yeah, so we so- know we're not seeing that person <laughs> get all happy because they baptized. I think I think the message is objective, right? So you can listen to a person, listen to their message, and objectively determine what spirit that they're of. That's that's objective. I get really uncomfortable when we start getting into subjective, like, 
you know, that person prayed for me, they preached a gospel message, and I was oppressed by a demon. Just like, man, that's that's kind of hard to figure that out. Like, um, that that's so subjective. It's case to case. I don't have a a doctrinal or theological um, reasoning behind that. I, I would use Jonathan Edwards' five points on a true revival to determine if something was God or not. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's like for me, I've seen a lot of younger people who it's weird because they were like earnestly desiring. Um, you know, even the gift of tongues, and they were praying for it for a long time, and then they, like, when they would speak in tongues, and when they believed that they got the gift of tongues, and they would speak in tongues, they would, like, be, you know, so encouraged, and be able to, like, feel more intimate with God, but then they heard people say, well, like, you got to be careful, because, you know, you also, it could be demonic, and so I knew, like, a lot of friends who just, like, would stop, because they were scared that, oh my goodness, maybe this is, like, a demonic tongue and I and I was like telling them like that same verse that you said if you yeah. ask your heavenly father for an egg like you think he's going to give you or you ask your father for an egg will he give you a snake so how much more your heavenly father when you ask and so that's what I was saying of like if you're asking for wrong motives so you can like show your other friends oh look I can speak in tongues mm-hmm. and if it's for like reasons I think but I think even God can like work with that if yeah. maybe you did it for the well, wrong reason and he can change I mean, you but there's so many That's the thing is, that. James 5 says, if mm-hmm. you ask with wrong motive, he won't give it to you. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Right? I mean, so, like, I've got one passage. Yeah. I've got one passage that says in James 5, like, hey, you, you have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask for your own sinful desires to spend it on your own pleasures. Yeah. Right? I'm not giving you that thing. Yeah. And and then we have in this other passage that says, if you ask for a good thing, he's not going to give you a bad thing. Yeah. Exactly. So if you ask for bad things, God won't give them to you. Yeah. yeah. Because it will hurt you as, as an individual. And if you ask for... Um, good things, he's not going to give you bad things. So again, as a Christian, I have a hard time making mm. sense of how we can operate um, imparting demonic spirits to people. I guess, um, what, do you, what do you think of this, Joshua? Kind of with that is, you know, saying that about James, but maybe, you know, because like it says, a wicked, adulterous generation asks for a sign. And I'm thinking out loud here, don't spank me too hard sure. if I'm wrong. <laughs> but is but is the, the James 3, 14, wherever there's selfish ambition, or jealousy or selfish ambition, there you find it's earthly and spiritual demonic. And so I wonder sometimes when, like, like Mariah was saying, when it's so much like I want the anointing, right? Like Benny Hen said, pray, you know, good morning, Holy Spirit. I want the anointing. I want the power. I want to be able to lay hands on people, kind of like the sons, you know, like the like the simony. I want the power to be able to impart gifts. I wonder if that selfish ambition where it really isn't because you love Jesus, but you just want the power like simony, Remember, and you saw Peter rebuked him. I, I wonder. If, you I him. wonder if that, like, that's where you could unknowingly maybe welcome a demonic, like a Most like a Mormonism pride. type thing, because you're so selfishly ambitious, where it really isn't because you love Jesus and you want to bless His body. Right, and I would say that you know those we, we would we judge people based off of doctrine and character, right? Mm-hmm. So those are the two again objective things. That's I, I want to keep it on objective mm-hmm. reality. Right. Not on subjective, like, because, again, people are going to want to make accusations in it. I know this is controversial. I, I apologize. You cut this out if you don't like it. But like Todd, like I, I see the guy in grocery stores praying for people mm-hmm. when cameras aren't around. Mm-hmm. The guy loves people. Yeah. Right. And you can make this accusation that like, no, Todd, he doesn't really he doesn't really love people like he just he just prays, you know, three hours a day weeping over the lost, you know, asking God to like save people. Like, granted, I think his his doctrine, his language is kind of sloppy, <laughs> um, and I think that he has said things I can't get behind. Um, but I do think he really, really loves people, and he really, really loves God. And I don't think that there's like this selfish ambition uh, in him to like manipulate and get rich and like that's just not there. Um, and again, people will disagree with me. Yeah. That's cool. Um, but just as a like uh, to use him as a as a as a uh, a foundation because people um, they're going to say that hey he's demonically inspired he's got demonic powers he's got whatever but I don't think that you can make that case um, especially when you do see him know. like preaching repentance and like he does talk about or at least what I've seen in his and then recent he, rec- he kind of repented of yeah in his recent things he really repentance. has been yeah. talking about that and that's what like I think just to sum up even everything we're saying it's like if the the main goal like is to just be more intimate with God and love God and love others, like that's what we're called to do. 
And also, that's why I think so many times people are so focused on, we need to go after these things, but they forget, like, hey, no, I want God to search me. I want God to, like, see if there's any wicked way within me. And like you're saying, that guy, he was trying to repent. It's like, there's people who are hurting, who are broken, who really want to be intimate with God. But like James 5, they want to confess their sins to others to be healed. But there's something where it's like, no, unless you have this gifting or this or that, like, you're not saved or you can't be. And so I think we need to get back to, right, like everyone says, but the simple gospel, like, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And Mm -hmm. And so my prayer, too, with what everything we talked about is that just because, you know, other people and like some people might not do things decently in order doesn't mean like they don't even that doesn't mean they don't love God. Like, I think sometimes people are just so caught up, like you said, in ritual, routine, what their church is doing, but they have a heart to love God. But I also believe that the Holy Spirit will then lead them out of those places if they will, too. And I've, and we've seen that, like we've seen that firsthand, like with people at our church. But, but there also, so. there also is, I want to say this, Joshua, I don't want to, uh, maybe this is going to go in a weird vein, but like I was saying off camera, I believe, but Lonnie Frisbee, who is kind of uh, associated with starting the Calvary, or really yeah. launching the Calvary movement and then really launching the Vineyard movement, which we get all, a lot of this crazy stuff now. But I mean, he was a really sincere guy and I guess he had been molested, yeah. struggled with homosexuality before he was a Christian. Mm-hmm. And then he got saved, got married young. I think he was like your age, like 21, 20. And then he got so busy in the ministry because remember the church exploded, went from like 150 people to 3000 and they were doing ministry everywhere. Calvaries were exploding. And so I, you know, I don't know if you ever saw the, what is the hippie preacher about Lonnie Frisbee, that movie. Did you ever see that movie by any chance? No. no, but he was basically, I mean, so Lon, his wife was saying, hey, Chuck, um, hey, Lonnie's not doing so good. We need to slow this train down. And Chuck was like, well, you know, and I love Chuck, so I'm not putting him down. But basically Chuck said, well, let's just wait till the revival's sort of over. Well, it lasts a long time. Well, then he kind of got into supposed to be homosexuality. Yeah. And so then he left. So I think, you know, Chuck kind of got wind of that. And then he kind of. Uh, kicked him out and the movie was sort of indicting Chuck like he kicked him out well then he went to Wimber's church and you have Chuck Smith's son saying so you got this guy and he did the I don't know if you've heard it but he did the Father's Day message or Mother's Day message Mother's where Day. he said come Holy Spirit and mm-hmm. everyone and, and Wimber didn't believe I mean I don't think he spoke in tongues yet or and but everyone's speaking in tongues and the 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 mic fell down but anyways but here Lonnie is in blatant sin now uh, sleeping, he's sleeping with, I guess, uh, what they said is with a guy in the Air Force, and this back in the uh, don't ask, don't tell. So he kind of was covered because the guy couldn't tell on him because the guy couldn't be practicing himself. And so, but Chuck Smith's son said to John Wimber, So are you cool with Lonnie being gay, or do you just not know about it? And Wim- Wimber didn't know, and so Wimber kind of got rid of Lonnie. But it's just that's something that is a charismatic for me how you have people like Lonnie Frisbee who started out so sincere, yep. you know, I really believe he was sincere. Even his wife says that, and he left her, but then got back in the old lifestyle, I think, because, you know, because he did, probably wasn't grounded well. You know what I mean? He was so busy doing he ministry. He, did, he didn't have enough time to really have a relationship with the Lord. You know what I mean? He was so, you know what I mean? So busy ministering, mm-hmm. he didn't really have time to pray and really deal with his own issues. And, and that's what a lot of them said, that they would literally have – Think about this, Joshua. They would literally have during the week 150 people lined up just to receive Christ during the week. So, I mean, they were Amen. not, they said we were working 14 hour days, 15 hour days, nonstop counseling. So it was kind of like, you know, be careful what you wish for. I mean, it was kind of like it was a revival, but it was overwhelming for a lot of them because they were young hippies. You know, they didn't really know a lot. So, what do you say about something like that? I'd like to hear your opinion on that of just how, because you can't deny that Calvary was a powerful movement. You know, I mean, I don't know what you say now, but, and you can't deny that the vineyard didn't have a powerful move. I mean, a lot of, I don't know how your assemblies were, but I know as a four square, we re- we had Wimber come speak twice, you know? And so what, what do you, how do you, I mean, you know, the charismatic cliche is, you know, or the saying is gifts and calls are without repentance. But how do you, as a, as a thoughtful man, reconcile that when someone is seemingly being used so powerfully 
and basically was a kind of accredited starting two major denominations, but yet towards the end was struggling with blatant sin. Um, well, we're so a, cu- a couple things, you know, um, we are all very, very human, mm-hmm. um, whether you're charismatic or not, um, and you, um, you love the Lord, uh, you can fall into sin. Mm-hmm. It's an easy thing to do uh, for anyone. Um, Paul who's going to save me from this wretched man that I am, yeah. right? Um, w- sin is not, um, sin is something that we're saved from. Um, it, it's something we're being saved from. And uh, hopefully, um, on the other side of, I say hopefully, on the other side of heaven, we will be saved from entirely. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, sin is crouching at the door and it wants to devour us. Um, it, it uh Again, this this has nothing to do with with being charismatic. There are people who were used by God to preach the gospel um, who were living in blatant sin outside of the charismatic circles. Um, you know, um, John Knox um, had an affair. Um, he's an old Puritan writer. Um, there there are uh, men throughout history um, who are you know great theologians, Martin Luther, um, not that he had a sexual immorality, but he was anti-Semitic towards the end of his life. Um, you know, uh, Jonathan Edwards owned slaves. Um, you know, are we going to look at all of these individuals throughout history and say, um, uh, I, I think we have to, we have to, we have to honestly understand that like, it's easy for any of us to practice sin, um, and justify it. Um, Ultimately, what we do with it, what do we do with it? We remove the sexually immoral from among us. Mm-hmm. That's what we do with it. Um, that's right. So, so when, when we're aware of sexual immorality, um, we address it, we take care of it, we fix it. Um, when we're aware of sin in our midst, we fix it, we take care of it. Um, but we can have great solace in that when miracles are done among us, uh, Paul, Paul, Peter, and John in Acts chapter 3 at the Gate Beautiful um, they told this man, you know, silver and gold I do not have, but this one thing I do have, rise and walk. He stands up and walks, and the men of the city come to Peter uh, Peter and John, and they're, they're baffled, they're blown away. And he goes, why do you look at us? As if there's any holiness or piety in ourselves. There's no holiness or piety in ourselves. They claimed it is not because of how I'm living that God is doing this through me. Jesus Christ has made this man well. So, um you could ask me, like, hey, how can God use a sexually immoral person? Like, how does he use me? <laughs> Paul, yeah. Peter, all, Peter said, exactly. yeah, yeah, how does he use any yeah. sinner, right? We're all exactly. sinners, yeah. right? So, but so, you know what I mean? Um, like, sometimes the justice thing, like, like how, how you know, because that was in the movie, people were saying, like, almost it got so bad, pen, Joshua, yeah. where people were sort of the homosexual community was using this as leverage that God must not be down with homosexuality. Because of how this guy was so powerfully used, you see God what I mean. It sort of kind of went the other is, way, of yes. saying, "Hey, God's not so upset by what we're upset." Yeah, by. and I get it, I get it. Um, but like that would that would be to say that God, you know, wasn't upset with David for yeah. murdering a man's wife and sleeping with a woman. But Jesus is known as the Son of David. Yep. Like, uh, no, um, that's no uh, sin is horrible. Um, but but what's interesting is the Hall of Faith is full of sinners. Yeah. Um, David's, David's grandmother was a prostitute, right? <laughs> Rahab. That's right. Yeah, you've got you've got forever in the hall of faith is Rahab, yeah. the harlot, yeah. right? Like her name someone say, is how do you know harlot. that's the same Rahab? Because uh, scholars say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got you've got Rahab, you've got you've got Samson, you've got like you've got guys who Noah, who totally, Noah. totally <laughs> are not Noah. I mean, their... Lot mm-hmm. sleep with his daughters. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. It, like it goes out of its way to intentionally mention not those who are faithful, but those who had faith. So um, I, I know nothing about the Lonnie Frisbee story. I mean, you telling me this is probably the second or third time I've heard of it. I've never done any research or in-depth study on it. I, I've got no way of academically speaking into something like this. Um, we look we look at the gift of, of the Spirit as if, like, we it would be so easy if I were to ask someone, hey, do you think a pastor in your church could teach? to teach the Bible and um, be practicing sin. Yeah. Do you think God could use him to teach the Bible and, and, you know, be wrestling with a sin? Like maybe it's a sin he doesn't even want. He doesn't like, like he's wrestling with it. He's trying not to practice this thing, uh, but he is Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. We've got statistics all over America. Pastors are doing this, right? So 
if they can teach, why couldn't they prophesy? Mm -hmm. Like why, why, why couldn't they lay hands on people? Like you understand that teaching is a spiritual gift, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is, it's not like you can separate the revelatory gifts from the more natural gifts. Like, Oh, there's a the gift of hospitality. Like that's empowered by the spirit mm -hmm. people. Like mm -hmm. we, we, we want to separate these gifts into like, like the charismatic ones, like the really ghosty gifts <laughs> and then like the normal gifts. Right. And like, um, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard to think about God using us and the really ghosty ones and, um, and, and having sin in our life, but it's okay for us to look at like hospitality and like leadership and teaching and be like, yeah, God can be empowering those gifts and us still wrestle with sin. But like the truth of the matter is like, like I have pride in me. Like, I'm going to take this to the grave if the Lord doesn't remove it from me. And like, I got to get on my face all the time and repent for the pride that I have in my heart. Like we reach 200,000 people every month online. And if I don't get on my face and, and be humble, like God's going to humble me. Right. So we've, we've got to, we've got to realize that like we have some measure of sin in each of us mm -hmm. and, and to think that we have to be absolutely perfect before God starts using us. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not the case. And again, if you hear me trying to justify homosexuality, I am not <laughs> doing that thing. Okay. I'm not, um, uh, sin is sin and sin is wrong and we need to repent of sin and trust in Christ to save us from our sin. Um, but, but if we're, if we're going to create an unbiblical paradigm that says that, um, we have to have this level of holiness to have this level of manifestation, you're not going to find that in scripture. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. I and, guess it's, it's kind of like for me, it's like the, a little bit of the self-righteous Pharisee because you think sometimes, you know, I, I don't have half the anointing of these guys. And sometimes you go, man, yeah. Lord, that's just so crazy. But, you know, it's like you said, it's a gift. And right. And we don't get to determine always we can pray for prophecy, but God's going to distribute them as he sees fit. And that's the thing, I think, as we get, you know, it's kind of hard, you know, like I, I heard, you know, I don't know if you know much about the Ravi Zachar or Arias thing, but where yep. you hear this atheist guy <coughs> online saying mm -hmm. that it seems like Ravi, who preached, and this is an atheist, he was a Christian and he became an atheist, said he preached this Christ so well, but doesn't seem like he really believed the Christ he preached. And it's just crazy. You know, I mean, it's a, it is amazing, um, like you said it so well, that that God uses any of us. Yep. But it is also amazing that people can be in blatant sin and God yep. uses them. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, though, like what, like, I guess, jealousy in my own life and, and how that how that's played out in different areas, you know, Um I think people can look at um, the ministry that we run and, you know, I get to, I get to sit down and hang out with N.T. Wright and Michael Heiser and Steven Mancars and so people, people can watch the show and be like, man, that's really cool. I, w I want to do that. But like, I, I see, uh, like, I really want to pastor. Like I really want to pastor badly. And um, there was a church in Oklahoma, in Crescent, Oklahoma that I went to and fell in love with the church and unfortunately they offered me their senior pastor position there. And, um, because of kind of unforeseen circumstances, I actually had to turn it down and I was really heartbroken over it. And then I went to North Carolina where my buddy was, um, he was in a really dark season and I got a word for him and I came and spent time with him and, um, and, uh, he was, he was borderline ready to apostatize mm -hmm. and he's told his church, like, Hey, if it wasn't for Josh, like I wouldn't be here. And I'm sitting here at his country church that he's pastoring now, and I'm jealous, dude. Mm. I'm sitting here watching how God is using him in this local community, and I'm just, I'm jealous. I'm like, man, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, but, like, like I, I was physically upset, right? He asked me, like, why are you upset? I, I couldn't know. I, like, I didn't even know, like, the, the, how sinful my own heart was. And I went and prayed, and, and just spent time before my service. Uh, and it was just funny, because I was preaching a message on suffering. Uh, and it was just hilarious that... Um, it, I, I planned on preaching this sermon like six months before, four months before when he asked me to, you know, and, um, you know, now I'm in a situation where I'm feeling the pressure of like, things are broken. Well and I, I don't want to <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'm living my sermon yeah. and I'm realizing that I'm living it. It's, it's total comedy and I'm literally laughing, you know, because I was, I was so distraught and upset and I'm literally laughing and, and I'm preaching a sermon. I consider all joy when you kind of various trials. I think it's so funny how how yeah. this is something that's testing me. You mentioned a statement just now, like um, he's using them greater. You know, they, they have all the sin in their life, but he's using them greater. Well, so I meant than seemingly he's using great. You know? no, but yeah. it's seemingly not. greater. And that's that's the important part. Seemingly. That's seemingly because um, 
people can look at Remnant Radio and think, oh, seemingly he's reaching the nations. Yeah. Here, here's the thing, guys. Like, if you're a pastor of a local church and you're caring for a local congregation and you are raising fathers and mothers to raise their children in the admiration of the Lord, mm -hmm. to fear God, you're having an impact on your city and a nation in a way that, that, that one itinerant speaker just can't have. We look at guys like Bonky, and we look at guys like Leonard Ravenhill, and we look at these guys who have these these t itinerant ministries where they travel and they preach, and like they're revivalists, and we just we covet what they have. Uh, but I'm telling you, God's plan for the world is the local church, okay. um, and a faithful pastor who pastors two hundred people for the, for the rest of his life till the day he dies is is going to be rich in heaven. Um, and these guys who have these massive platforms. Um, I pray that they don't lay knee deep in ashes. Mm. It's like crazy how, um, like if you look at my, like what you're saying, Joshua, if you look at my graph, I was like, cause I was gonna, do you remember um, Dawson McAllister, the guy in Texas, the, the the kid, he used to have a radio show for youth. It was, a he was came out of, I forget, I think it was Dallas. But anyways, I wanted to be him as in 94. And we did a radio show. I was going to be up. This is back before social media, so I was going to be up on a satellite, but it was real expensive. And we had the number one radio show on the FM here uh, for kids on Saturday night. So I was kind of like you. And it was funny. So when I – here I had – I was at, you know, Grace Chapel, Four Square Church. I had a youth group of 250 kids. And then I had the, – then I started this ministry, Say Us Life, where we'd have Toby Mac. We'd go speak in schools. Then we do a big – what? DC I'm, Talk. DC Talk. But it was like my graph peaked. And now, like you said, I have now, you know, you know what I mean, num numerically. And uh, and I was just like, now nah, I said, my youth group is bigger than this church. My youth group used to be 100 people more. But it's like I've never been more sincere with God. But yet, outwardly, I've never had such the least amount of uh, accolades. But like you yeah. said, and, and it's really, I, I thank you for that honesty. Because when I was doing CS Life and I was, you know, TBN wanted me to do a show with them and all this stuff. I, I felt like the man, right? Everyone loved me, but I was empty. And it was really wild as God spoke to my heart and said, Craig, you're not doing this for me. You're doing this for you, trying to please your That's grandpa right. who didn't really, wasn't really impressed with Christianity or Christians. And he said, the only one I'm impressed with is Billy Graham. You know, and I said, okay, God, if this is me, then if this is selfish ambition, blow it apart. Six months later, the ministry's done. And then I kind of went back to work at a secular hotel. And then now I've been in ministry. God kind of pulled me back in. But he kind of. You didn't even you know, want to be yeah, a senior pastor. Yeah, I didn't want to be a pastor. senior. So it's kind of funny pastor. how. Isn't it funny how it's like be content in whatever circumstance? I mean, here you want to be a senior. Yeah. And I was fighting to not be a senior. It's like you saw Gladiator. Did you see the movie Gladiator? Yeah. Oh, Remember yeah. when he said, you must be Caesar? And he goes, but no. with all respect, no. And he goes, that's why you must be Caesar. Yeah. And I'm sort of, you know, yeah. it's like, it's sort of funny how, you know, a lot of people would like to be you. And you want to be a pastor. Yeah, we want but to be But it's sort you. of funny. It's sort of funny how God, you know, here I was like, no, no, no. And God's like, you must be a pastor, you know, a senior. Because I was a youth pastor for 22, 21 years. And then God's like, you're too old and fat and, and gray haired. <laughs> so you got to be a senior. But but it's just amazing. I guess, like Paul says, be content Amen. in whatever circumstance you're in, right? I mean, as long as you have food and clothing. Yeah. And that's the key is that, but, you know, it's funny. I So I asked my, my kind of my mentor, my senior pastor. I said, so is it really true that the greatest on earth shall be the least in heaven, the least <laughs> shall be great? You know, I've kind of said, and I think if you really walk in the door, not that God can't give you accolades or a big radio show like you have, but that it's just really, it's it's really about, I think what you're saying, the simple gospel and really doing all your work hardly is for the Lord rather than for men, right? Yeah. Not yeah. doing it for the crowd, you know, the numbers, the fame, but doing it because you love Jesus and Amen. you just want to make him known. Amen. Exactly. Well, at the end of the day, like we're going to stand before Christ and he's either going to say, like, he's not going to say, well done, my good and successful <laughs> servant. Right. Yeah. He's going to say, yeah. thanks for being faithful. Being faithful. Right. Amen. Like, well done. Um, and, and that's, that's what I want. Like I, I just, I have a space that I'm in and, and everyone who's listening has a space that they're in and you're supposed to be faithful with what you're given. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so when, when, when thinking about people who are being used, we see the outward display of just how my, my prayer. Oh man, my prayer that I've prayed since Bible school has been like, Lord, don't, don't let my gift outgrow my character. Mm -hmm. 
you know, like don't let my gift. Um, I had my mentor, uh, Daniel, his, the guy that discipled him, um, he fell hard. Uh, his name was uh, Michael Rowan. He fell into sin and uh, Daniel didn't talk about it much. And we we're on a plane together. And I was just like, hey, tell me this story, man. Like, I, I want to, you don't talk about it. What happened? And uh, he just said, hey, his gifting was so good. He could start doing this without the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. He goes, I see it in me. And he let me square in the eye and says, and I see it in you. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, you are the <laughs> <end."> <laughs> <laughs> I do not receive that in the name of Jesus. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So at 19, I'm like, Lord, like, mm-hmm. I don't want to be able to do this without you. Like, why would I want that? Um, and that scares me. Um, and I don't, I don't want my, my gift to be greater than my character, yeah. you know? Um, and I just ask God all the time to like, take any gifting away, take any opportunity away. That's not sufficient with my character because um, I don't. Man, we, we we try so hard to have the accolades and like look all the things I'm doing for Jesus. Like Lord, look look how much I love you and like we want to be Peter, but like at the end of the day, when we deny Christ, mm-hmm. we have this massive platform and we deny Him through our actions, our immorality. Mm-hmm. Like we've we've brought the gospel to open shame. Yeah. Um, and it's not to say that God won't forgive us and He doesn't still love us, but it's just like. Why would I want to reach all these people for Jesus and then fail miserably yeah. and bring the gospel to shame? Um, like I, I just, I would rather have a small little nothing and be faithful and have good character. And the reality is the bigger audience you have, the more attention you have, the more susceptible you are, um, the, the, the more the enemy is going to come at you and, and try to deceive you with selfish ambition and pride. Um, and we just have to, we have to be sensitive and not not drink our own Kool Aid. Yeah. Um, and it's also like, yeah. what are you leading people to? Are you leading them to like a person, right? The seal or that, or are you leading them to God and intimacy with Him and holiness, repentance? And and that's what I see with your ministry. It's like I really see that God is using you to where it's not just like, oh, we're trying to teach people like all this knowledge so they can be puffed up with pride. But you also teach like, okay, this is what it means to like repent the good news and talking about the balance of we can't just have, oh, it's just the Holy Spirit and listen to his voice and then take out the word. Or we can't just just have the word and be a cessationist. And then and I love how like you talk about the balance, but you're also it's not just directing people to have like we were talking like when we were saying something to like all these people are like all these people are so focused on like. Oh, I need to be puffed up with this knowledge and stuff so I can win at Bible trivia. But then they don't even have their own life together. They're like, they're like. She's saying, I joked yesterday, I don't mean to name drop, but I was talking with Steven yesterday. Oh, yeah. And I said, Steven, because you know, he came with this video about kind of, you know, struggling. And I go, Steven, you know, you got to make sure you're not studying more about the Nephilim. Than you are about your character and being holy before God. <laughs> he said, laughing. you know, a lot of people are gonna go to they're gonna go to hell because they knew about the devil. I said, really, God cares more about your person than about mm-hmm. how much you know about all these kind of trivial things. And it was actually knows, Todd but. White that said it, and we really liked what he said. He's like, so many people talk about they want the Holy Spirit, but then they don't want to be holy and ask the Holy Spirit yeah. and ask yeah. God to like help cleanse them. And that's our prayer is that every single day we pray that. Psalm 139, search me, O God, know my heart, test me, know my anxious ways, see if there's any um, wicked way within me and lead me on the way of everlasting life. And then even just for our podcast, our, our verse is Galatians six fourteen. may never boast about anything except for the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Because that cross, my interests in the world have died, in the world's interests in me have died. So it's so easy to like, especially when we got a podcast during um, COVID, it's like getting all these big guests. Like we've had Steven, we've had Michael Heiser, we've had Josh McDowell. And yet it's so easy to like want to know all this stuff. Like, like we're joking to win at Bible trivia instead of like, no, we want to direct people to the cross of Jesus Christ, to repentance, to get right with him so they can have a peace and a blessed, blessed assurance that they will be with the Lord in heaven one day. So that's our prayer. And, and we see that with your ministry and we're really thankful for what you guys do and um do you have anything else you would like to share i know we've gone over our time and anything 
go to The Remnant Radio, um, literally any platform, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, um, everywhere, The Remnant Radio. Um, my name is Joshua Lewis. I'm the, the host, the founder. Um, Michael Rantree is my co-host who came on last year um, uh, with us. And then we have Michael Miller, who was my co-host prior. He does a weekly show with us on The Gifts. So um, we have two interviews each week, and we have one show dedicated to The Gifts of the Spirit, where we address um, cessationist arguments on specific gifts like healing. Then we'll do, um, so like, um, why, why cessationists don't like healing and prophecy and those kinds of things. We'll, we'll address those and correct those. And then we'll talk about um, the proper use of those the next week. And then the week after that, we'll talk about the charismatic excesses and abuses of those. So just trying to call balls and strikes, uh, not trying to accept everything, um, uh, uh, but but trying to be discerning in the midst of that. Amen. So. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed Joshua, it. hey, man, yeah. you Thanks did a great out. job with COVID, man. You're smarter than me with COVID, so you're <laughs> awesome, bro. And if you want to preach, you're always welcome to come here. I'll have to invite you to come preach oh, thanks, some Sunday. Man. Bless you, bro. Cool. Thank that, you, man. Awesome. Love you. Thanks for all Bless your time. Me. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. Some resources I would like to share with you guys is Understanding Spiritual Gifts by Sam Storms and Practicing the Power. You guys can purchase these on Amazon. And these are good resources if you guys are wanting to know the balance and what it means to be a cessationist and continuationist, but understanding the balance that we need the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations to check out our behind the scenes. And if you would like to order our new merch, our t-shirts, that you can go down below in the description and order that thanks so much guys and god bless